usual. Stricken, smitten, and afflicted, see him dying on the tree. Tis the Christ by men rejected, yes, my soul, tis he, tis he. Tis the long-expected prophet, David's son, yet David's Lord. Proofs I see sufficient of it, tis the true and faithful word. Tell me ye who hear him groaning, was there ever grief like his? Friends through fear his cause disowning, forced insulting his distress. Many hands were raised to wound him, none would interpose to save. But the deepest stroke that pierced him was the stroke that justice gave. Ye who think of sin but lightly, nor suppose the evil great, hear my view is nature rightly, hear its guilt may estimate. Mark the sacrifice appointed, see who bears the awful load. Tis the word the Lord's anointed, Son of man and Son of God. Here we have a firm foundation, here the refuge of the lost. Christ the rock of our salvation is the name of which we boast. Lamb of God for sinners wounded, sacrifice to cancel guilt. None shall ever be confounded who on him their hope have filled. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Sunday Morning Mass here at St. Martin's Chapel. What a blessing to be here today with you brothers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good to see you guys. We had a wonderful Bible study upstairs, and I believe the Lord's with us today. Amen? Amen. Amen, Amen. and welcome to all you that are watching uh, live via Facebook or YouTube. It's a blessing to have you here with us as well. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. So Easter is coming up in just a few weeks. We're just around the corner. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My brothers, my sisters, let us prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries by confessing our sins. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have failed to do. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me. And in your compassion, renew me with your spirit, so that cleansed of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. 
May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins, and pardon you. And by the Holy Spirit, may we receive everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, with an unfathomable love for the people of our world, your beloved Son, Jesus, handed himself over to death. May the same love that inspired his sacrifice abide in us and be woven into every aspect of our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, and we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our first reading for this morning's Holy Mass on this fifth Sunday in Lent is taken from the prophet Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and you have risen from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you, that you may live. I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is taken from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice and supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be revered. Trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Our second reading this morning is taken from the New Testament, Paul's letter to the Roman Christians. He writes, Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit dwelling in you. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. And when Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of Man, or the Son of God, rather, may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became upset and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, upset again, came to the tomb, and it was a cave, and a stone lay across it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. And Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what, had, what he had done began to believe in him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is good. Amen. 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 All the time. For those of you watching uh, on Facebook, if you see a little head and tail, that's my dog. Mm -hmm. She decided to come down and have mass with us today. That's Sister Lily. <laughs> is her new name. She's now been ordained the nun in our order. <laughs> today I'd like to use for the sermon, one verse from the gospel reading for today. John chapter 11, verse 35. Jesus wept. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much, O oh God, for this new day, as Bill prayed earlier. We thank you that we can be here, Lord, in the chapel. Father, we feel your presence. I feel your presence here, Lord. Your Holy Spirit is embracing us and guiding us. And Lord Christ, you put your arms around us. Thank you, Father, for letting us be here today to sing, to pray, to worship, to hear your word and celebrate the holy sacraments. Give us your peace this day, Lord. And may we walk this day in the light of your love. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Again, John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. So the title for today's message is Jesus Weeps for Us. Jesus Weeps for Us. Here in the account of the death of Jesus' good friend Lazarus is just such a short verse. In fact, two words. <laughs> the shortest verse in Scripture. It's only two words. Jesus wept. But yet those two words speak volumes and volumes. This is an account here where Jesus uses the opportunity of what we face in life called death to show that everyone, to show everyone life and death and in the midst of life and death, who's really in control? Who's really in control of everything? And he brings us to the point to show us and join us with him in the pain of human suffering and loss. It's an account where Jesus uses the opportunity to show the love and the power of God for his friends Mary and Martha and Lazarus. For in the text, it said Jesus loved them, didn't it? And now his good friend Lazarus, whom he loved, had passed away. And in this text, we see two things about Jesus. We see his humanity, his total humanity, and we also see his total divinity. The two natures of Christ, all together in one. So what happened? Well, here we go. Lazarus was sick. In fact, his sisters came to Jesus saying, Lord, behold, whom you love is sick. And Jesus replied, this sickness isn't done to death but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified in it. Here we have an opportunity so that the love of the Father, the love of the Son, and God would be glorified in all of this. It's an opportunity so that God, so that God the Father and God the Son would be one, and they would raise Lazarus from the grave. They got to the tomb that day. And what did Jesus do when he got there? And he saw all the people. What did he do? It's our text. He wept. Jesus wept. But who did he weep for? I think Jesus, one thing he did was he wept for himself. It says in the text he loved Lazarus. He loved Mary and Martha. Other places in scripture he would go to their house he would eat with them and fellowship with, with them and dine with them. And they were good friends and they knew each other. So Jesus wept for himself. That's his humanity. That's his human side. He felt the loss and he felt the pain of a loved one who died. You ever weep for a loved one? Yeah. When my mom died and when my dad died, I cried like crazy for days. And Jesus understands that. He felt the same way at the loss of his good friend, Lazarus. And he not only wept for himself, he wept for all the people that were there. Because there were other people that were around the tomb, and they were crying. Other friends, other relatives of this man, Lazarus. And Jesus experienced our suffering, and he cried right along with the people. And even today... He experiences our suffering, and he's here with us to help us go through the things we face. When he took on our humanity, he took it all on. Some people think, oh, he only took on a little bit of it. No, he took on everything, because Jesus was the total person, the total man, with feelings and desires like we have. He was totally like us except for one thing. And what was that one thing he never had? It's called sin, right? Jesus took on our complete humanity, but he never took on our sin. He had no sin, and he came to overcome sin. The friend of Jesus, Lazarus, died as a result of what? Sin, isn't it? Without sin in the world, there was no death. But now that sin entered in the world, everybody dies. So ultimately, Lazarus died 
from a sickness brought on by sin itself. And there at the tomb, Jesus wept with all the people. And the text for this sermon says, once again, Jesus wept. I love these two short verses. They're one of the most powerful verses in all of Scripture. Divinity and humanity all wrapped up in one. Paul says in Colossians 2.9, For in Him, talking about Jesus, for in Him all the fullness dwells in bodily form. All the fullness of divinity dwells in bodily form. So there at the tomb, Jesus showed us both sides of Himself. In His humanity, He wept. But in His divinity, what did He do? He called out and He said, Three simple words. Lazarus, come forth. And the dead man heard the voice of Christ. Call his name. He got up from the burial slab. And after they rolled away the, the stone from the entrance of the tomb, he walked out. And Jesus said, take those burial cloths off of him and set him free. Moved with compassion. In love, Jesus raised Lazarus from the grave. And Lazarus got up and he walked out. And Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. There's no mistake, folks, that the power of God was present in Jesus that day. Amen? Mm -hmm. They saw him. They saw God in the flesh raise a dead man with three simple words. The Father has given to His Son, Jesus, the power of life. The Scripture says, in Him is life. Lazarus heard the voice of Jesus call to him, and he was made alive again. Because of Christ, death had no power at all over Lazarus. Jesus said to the sisters, this sickness will not end in death. And he was right. In fact, Jesus said to His disciples, He's asleep. <laughs> this is mere sleep. Because of Christ, death has no power over Lazarus or you or you or you or you out there or me. The Bible says, oh death, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Mm -hmm. In the presence of Christ, death is defeated. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to fret it. We don't have to be afraid of death. It's something as humans we are all going to face. It's something all of life is going to face at some point called death. But look how people try to get away from it today, don't they? Mm -hmm. They try to stretch their skin. They try to get Botox. They try to get creams to fill in the wrinkles and make themselves look younger. But at the end of the day when they take all that stuff off, they're still the same person that's going to face death one day. They run from it. They try to cover it up. They don't want to look at it. Death in our society scares us, doesn't it? In many societies, they accept it as a part of life. Think about this. From the moment you're conceived, you're starting to die. That's part of life. That's part of life. But for us as Christians in death, we see the power of God. We face the power of God because death isn't final, isn't it? Death is not final. It's part actually of living. Many refer to it as a door into eternity that we step through. You know, one day, every one of us in this room and everyone hearing my voice, one day we will hear the voice of Jesus and we will live forever. Jesus will call to us. We'll hear his voice and we'll live. And that's why the Apostle Paul says, don't grieve as the rest of those grieve at death who have no hope. It's good to grieve, isn't it? For someone who has died. It's good for us and it shows how much we love them. Just like Jesus. The people saw him in his tears and they said, see how much he loved him. So tears are good, and it's a normal human experience. Jesus cried. Our tears, like the tears of Christ, only show love 
for the person. However, if we believe in Christ as our Savior and as our Lord, we know that we will see our loved ones again. That's a promise God gives us. We know that we will see them again and we will be with them for all eternity. And that's something we learned from Jesus and Lazarus today in the text. Jesus called out to Lazarus. And what did Lazarus do? He became alive. He got up and he walked. He rose from the dead at the call of Christ. And before Jesus even went to the tomb, he said to the disciples, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, didn't he? Jesus compares death to sleep. It's temporary. We go to sleep at night. We wake up in the morning. Death is the same way. We close our eyes in death, but then we wake up. And we see the glory of God because we're in the presence of God. And we'll be with him forever. Death doesn't have to make us afraid. Death is something as believers in Christ we can actually look forward to. Because death is only a temporary state bringing us to everlasting life. Jesus referred to death as sleep. Death ain't permanent. It's temporary. And we will all awake from it one day at the voice of Christ. Jack, you'll hear him say, Jack, come forth. Or Greg, come forth. Or Bill, come forth. And we will awake from it at the voice of Christ. Our tears now, our tears now are temporary. But for us, glory awaits, doesn't it? Paul says, nothing compares to the glory that is to be revealed to us. That's what awaits us. So we can look forward to death to be with Christ and see him face to face. Amen. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for the simple message you've given us this day. We thank you, O Lord, for being there at the gravesite of your friend Lazarus. And Lord, help us realize we don't have to be afraid of death. We look at it even as a gift, because through death we see you face to face. We thank you, Lord Christ, for being with us and teaching us such wonderful lessons. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in the words of the Nicene Creed, our ancient Christian faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, True God of true God, begotten, not created, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
our intercessions this morning. Lord God, you have brought us out of slavery to sin and to the freedom of new life through the death and the resurrection of your Son. This morning we lift to you our sacrifice and our thanksgiving. And our response this time will be, we give you thanks, Lord God. For the privilege of turning away from sin, we give you thanks, Lord God. For the strength you give us to obey our selfishness and defeat, we give you thanks, Lord God. For the humility you bestow, which rescues us from pride and arrogance, we give you thanks, Lord God. And for the gift of new life, floats forth in baptism's cleansing tide. We give you thanks, Lord God. No matter our situation, you always stand ready to hear us. This morning, as a new day begins, we intercede for those needs which we now call to mind. Our response this time will be, Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. For penance and compunction, to become a pathway to renewal in our lives. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. For the lowliness of heart to inspire us to serve you and others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. For the privilege of giving of ourselves that others may know life to the full. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. For the courage to worship you always in spirit and in truth. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great, and for audacity to cling to your love, no matter what the world, the flesh, or the devil seek to place in our path. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. In the power of the Spirit, we also look before you the needs and intentions that are close to our hearts. Father, today I want us to remember and pray for both Andy and Sean, who uh, told me yesterday as we talked would be here today, and for some reason they're nowhere to be found again. Lord, whatever they're going through, may you draw them close to you. May they hear the voice of Christ calling to them and become alive in their spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Papa, I would like to second what uh, Father Steve just said. It would be wonderful to see both uh, Sean and Andrew again. And I, I hope they find it in their heart to come here and be with us, if, if only for one Sunday, but many Sundays to come. We, we come into a broken and bloody world this morning, as we always seem to. Uh, we now have to include uh, the people of the United States such as in Mississippi, who are just, uh, that's, just, that's just such a terrible situation, Father. And of course, Florida is still trying to come back from its flood. Pakistan, a third of the country was destroyed by flood. Uh, Turkey, so many deaths from the earthquakes. Oh. So much unnecessary death, as it turns out. We pray for all these people and we pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world that you stand firm with them so that they may stand firm with you. Thank you, Papa. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for this day again. Thank you. Uh, we just pray for peace in Ukraine and there's a peace treaty on, on the horizon and that the parties would be willing to make peace with each other. We just ask that you just watch over that that and, and it, watch over the innocent people that live there that are being, their lives being destroyed, that these leaders would just not think of themselves and think of their people. And we also pray what's going on in Syria with the troops and uh, we pray for peace there as there's turmoil there. And we ask that you just watch over us and keep up. Keep your people safe. In Jesus' name. Yes. Father, we pray for Elise settling down in Germany. Lord, she's by herself and she's going through some trials right now, oh. being alone until she begins her new position Thursday at the university. Watch over and give her peace, Lord. 
and help her to find comfort. Comfort in you and comfort from the people she'll meet along the way this week. And may you fill us with kindness for all the hurt that we come to address each and every day of our lives. Not our own distress, but the distress of others. And we offer up this prayer this morning in the name of your Son and our brother, the Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our concluding prayer this morning is, Father, source of strength, the battle between good and evil rages. Amen. And our ancient foe attempts to us with deceitful and empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your words. Strengthen us through the sacraments and raise us up day by day through the power of the death and resurrection of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, who lives and reigns with you and your spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray, my brother, and my sisters, that the sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is just and right. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Having loved his own who were in the world, your Son loved them all to the end. And on the night before he suffered, he instituted these holy mysteries that we, receiving the benefits of his passion and resurrection, might be made partakers of his divine nature. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all your saints of every time and place who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. glory be to you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Therefore, I humbly pray and beseech you that you would be pleased to accept and bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotted sacrifices, which in the first place we offer you for your holy Catholic Church, to which we ask you to grant peace is also to preserve, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servants Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch, Todd, our Archbishop, Bernard, our Abbot General, as well as all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those who believe and profess the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Be mindful, O Lord, of all your presence, whose faith and devotion are known to you, and we offer for them, or they themselves offer this sacrifice of praise for themselves, their families and friends, for the redemption of their souls, for the health and salvation they hope for, and for which they now pay their vows to you, the eternal living and true God, communicating with and honoring in the first place the memory of the ever-glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, as also of all the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Thaddeus, Benedict, Stephen, Robert, Alberic, and all your saints, at whose intercession grant that we may be always defended by the help of your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We therefore beseech you, O Lord, graciously to accept this oblation of our servitude as also of your holy family, and to dispose our days in your peace to save us from the time of trial and rank us in the number of your elect. Send out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine made by human hands, which oblation to you, O God, vouchsafe in all respects to bless, approve, ratify, and accept that it may be made for us the body and the blood of our most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands. With his eyes lifted up towards heaven to you, almighty God, his Father. Giving thanks to you, he blessed. He broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it, 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after you have supped, taking also the chalice into his holy and venerable hands, giving you thanks, he blessed, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord, we your servants is also your holy people, calling to mind the blessed passion of the same Christ, your Son, our Lord, his resurrection from the dead, and ascension into heaven. Offer unto your most excellent majesty of your gifts bestowed upon us, a pure host, a holy host, an unspotted host, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation upon which vouchsafe to look with a propitious and serene countenance, and to accept them as you are graciously pleased to accept the gifts of your just servant Abel and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered to you, a holy sacrifice and unspotted victim. We most humbly beseech you, Almighty God, to command these gifts to be carried by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, that as many as shall partake of the most sacred body and blood of your Son at this altar may be filled with every heavenly grace and blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Also to us sinners, your servants, confiding in the multitude of your mercies, be pleased to grant some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all your saints, into whose company we beseech you to admit us, not in consideration of our merit, but of your gracious pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To whom, O Lord, do you always create, sanctify, quicken, bless, and give us all these good things. By him, with him, in him, is to you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Instructed by your saving precepts and following your divine directions, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we beseech you, O Lord, from all evils, past, present, and to come. By the intercession of the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, of Andrew, our holy father, Benedict, and all the saints, mercifully grant us peace in our days, that through the assistance of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, world without end. Amen.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. May this mixture and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be to us who receive it, effectual to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, Amen. to take away the Amen. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Regard not my sins, but the faith of your church, and grant her that peace and unity which is your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who according to the will of the Father, has by your death, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, given life to the world, Deliver us by this your most sacred body and blood from all our iniquities and from all evil. Make us always adhere to your commandments and never suffer us to be separated from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, word, and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto everlasting life. Amen. What shall I give to the Lord for all the things he has given to me? I will take the chalice of salvation and will call upon the name of the Lord. I shall be saved from my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word. My, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. The body of Christ, the bread of Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Today, as we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the chapel of St. Martin's, we pray that you that are watching that aren't with us today will receive Christ into your heart in a very spiritual way. Come receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fill the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Jack, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Grant the Lord that what we have taken with our mouth we may receive with a pure heart, that is a temporal gift that may become to us an eternal remedy.
May your body, O Lord, which I have received in your blood, which I have drunk, stain my heart. Grant that no stain of sin may remain in me, who has been fed with the Spirit and Holy Sacrifice. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. O Lord, we have consumed your holy body and blood. <coughs> let not the fire of hell consume us. Our eyes have touched your holy face. Let them see your abundant mercy. O Word of God, we have shared in your holy mysteries. Let us join you in your heavenly abode. Count us among the sheep at your right hand, and we shall sing your glory forever. O bread of life, we have taken you as nourishment in our journey. May the fires of hell not approach us, because the aroma of your holy body and blood emanates from us. O Savior of mankind, through your holy baptism, may we join you in your holy mansion of life and peace forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O Lord, let the performance of my homage be pleasing to you, O Holy Trinity. And grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up in the sight of your majesty may be acceptable to you and through your mercy a propitiation for me and for all those for whom it has been offered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. great song. Thank you for being here with me today, guys, and thank you for everybody that watched today. We, we truly had a wonderful Mass, I think. And I pray that the Lord blesses you and keeps you in everything you do this day, and we are able to get together again next week. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, with all that being said, this Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.